is all. Yeah, I was a phone sex operator. Everybody want to know skeletons in my closet? You want to know all the skeletons in my closet? I was a phone sex operator twice, actually, if you really want to know. And yes, Art knew about it because everybody on Belgab wrote him and told him, oh my God, did you know that Heather, that Heather was a phone sex operator? Yeah, I was. I, I was. That's what I did. Um, after 9-11 happened, um, I ended up losing my job and my engine in my car exploded because somebody drove my car and ran it out of water. And so shock of all shocks, the engine uh, blew. And so here I am, I'm stuck and I don't have my job because 9-11, when that happened, boy, I don't know if everybody remembers that, but business just tanked. I mean, business just went south. Uh, I mean, almost all businesses just totally went south. There wasn't a whole lot of money to be made right after uh, September 1st uh, on 9-11, uh, 2001. And so here I am. I now don't have a job. I'm stuck at home, and I don't have a car. My car is at the shop, and it's going to take, I think, I don't know, it was like $1,200 at the time to get it fixed, which was a lot of money for me if I don't have it at the time. So what am I going to do? I had to figure out a way to work from home. So the first thing I did, if people want to know, is I started working for Miss Cleo. I used to work for the Miss Cleo line, and I did tarot readings on Miss Cleo's line. And uh, that turned, it was okay, but boy, it was very draining. Mm. Very, very draining. And so I was not making enough to pay for the car. And the garage was telling me, look, we got your car fixed, but, you know, we got to store your car here and it's going to cost you every day, you know, to store the car. So now I got this bill racking up. They're keeping my car. It is fixed, but what am I going to do? So I am not the type of person to borrow money from people. And I went online because this was, remember, 2001, we got the internet and I started looking online for a way to make money at home, and I run across, uh, hey, maybe adult entertainment. So I'm going, oh, my God, do I really have to do this? So uh, so I found a company that what they would do is route the calls to your home phone, and they would protect your home phone number. And I don't know how I'm going to do with this at all. And I've never done it before, and I'm just scared to death. I mean, I just want to get my car fixed. So uh, I take my first call, and it's 11 minutes long, this call. And at the end of the call, the guy Hello. goes, uh, so how long have you been doing this? First he says, what's your name? And at that time, I, we actually used our real name, so I said, my name is Heather. And he goes, how long have you been doing this? And I said, well, you're my first call, as a matter of fact. And he did not believe me. He absolutely did not believe me. He said I was a liar. And I said, okay. And uh, we ended the call. And it turned out that, uh, wow, I got real busy on those lines real quick. And it got to the point where I would do an eight-hour shift. My shift started at midnight, and I would work until 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. And it got to the point where it was nonstop. The, I mean, I would end a call, and boom, the phone would ring. And then I would end my shift, and the folks at the company would call, and they'd say, I know it's 9 o'clock in the morning, and I know you just logged off, but... Can you log on again for a couple hours? Because, And so it turned out <clears throat> that I had a talent for this. I, I had no idea what I was doing. It scared the hell out of me. I was very embarrassed to tell my mom because eventually I had to go. I picked up the car from the shop, and I was very proud of that. Uh, and then I had to explain to my mom what I was doing, and that was pretty embarrassing. Uh, yeah, that was pretty embarrassing. And then my mom is a big fan of this movie Blaze. Have you ever seen Blaze? You ever, no. You ever seen, you gotta go see this. You would love this movie. It's called Blaze. Anyway, it's about this, uh, hometown girl. <laughs> And she wants to go make something of herself. And she travels to New Orleans. I think it takes place in the 50s or the 60s. And she travels to New Orleans. And uh, of all things, young lady ends up becoming a stripper in New Orleans. And she ends up becoming very, very good at it. And she ends up becoming friends with uh, Jeffrey Long, the uh, then governor 
of the great state of Louisiana. And it's a true story. The whole thing is a true story about Blaze. I, I forget her actual real name. Anyway, my mom was a big fan of this movie, and it was a big uh, favorite in our house because it's just a feel-good story. And one of the things that the mama tells B- little Miss Blaze in the film, and they call her Blaze because she's got this red hair, this fiery red hair. And besides that, she was absolutely gorgeous in the movie and in real life. And a uh, real classy lady. And uh, anyway, she goes home to visit her mom at, at one point in the movie. And she brings her mom all these presents. She brings her mom a, a mink coat and all these things. And then oh, she God. sits down at the table and she says, Mama, I, I got to tell you, you know, because her mom is so impressed that her daughter's doing very well. She's got a car. And in the 50s, that's a big deal. And Blaze is doing very well. And she says, Mama, I got to tell you the truth about what I've been doing. And Mama brings out this scrapbook, <laughs> and she goes, honey, it's okay. I've been following everything because Blaze was so good back in her day. She was in the newspaper. They wrote articles about her and everything else, and because there was this great big scandal with her and the and Governor Long. And so it was all in the papers, and it was this big, huge deal. And so here comes Mama with her scrapbook, and she opens it up, and and she goes, "Honey, I've been following you, following your career, and you know what, baby, you got to do the best you can with what God gave you." That's what Heather always does. That's uh, what my mom told me when I told her what I had to do. And uh, I got to apologize because um, I'm not proud of it. But I will not lie to you guys and I will not hide from the truth. And if you have a different opinion of me now, because that's what I did for a living, well, then that's okay. I understand. But... But I will tell we you all one have thing. To make a living. We all got to make a living, and I don't ask for charity. I don't ask to borrow money from people. I don't care if I have to starve, and I did there for a while. I went hungry, but that's okay. I will do without before I ask somebody to give me food from their table. And uh, and so I did do that, and turns out I was very successful at it. And then eventually I didn't want to do that no more, and I found myself a better job, and then a crash of 2008 happened. And, um, well, then I ended up working at a club called a Tip Top Club. That's right. That's right. If you want to know, I'll tell you. That's right. I went and worked at the Tip Top Club for about four years, was also fairly successful at that. And then when I had to recover after my near-death experience, well, I had to work from home. And I had to make some money. So I went back to something that I know how to do. And if you want to call me and tell me what for about that, hey, I got nothing to hide. I got nothing to hide. You want to judge me? Go right ahead. You go right ahead because you got it twisted up, actually. I'm not on the witness stand over here, my friends. Something else I inherited from art was a gavel. Order in the goddamn court. I'm the boss here. And yeah, I'll answer your questions. You want to call up and humiliate me? You do your worst. Yeah, I was a phone sex operator, and I was a stripper, and I was a front office girl, and I was a a, a prop maker, and I was a DMV representative, and I was a bail representative. I've done a lot of jobs in my day. Yeah, I have. What about you? How about we put your life up to scrutiny, and let's see if your entire life has been perfect, according to the judge of public opinion. Well, I'm here to let you know, folks, that I'm not the witness in this situation. I'm the judge. We'll be right back. <laughs> 